Hello everybody, welcome to the Lucian G. Kaiser Age. I'm Lucian G. Kaiser, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Macross VF-1S Valkyrie High Metal R figure from Bandai Tamashi Nations. This is an excellent figure that I picked up from Hobby Link Japan, and we're just going to take a quick brief look at it. This once again is just another test from my microphone, but also I want to just show off this fighter and show you why this is just a great figure to have all around if you're interested in Macross figures for your own collection. So to start off with, this of course is part of the 35th anniversary collection for Macross, as you can see displayed on the stand there. And this particular fighter comes molded in the colors from the Ace Pilot Macer from Macross Delta. This is his own personal color variation on the VF-1S. I'm just going to go ahead and take it off the stand here real quick. It does come with a stand attachment, so you can attach it to a Bandai Tomashi Nations action base stand. And it comes with this particular stand as part of the set, which is awesome. But as you can see here, once again, on display is his own personal Grim Reaper symbol that is on his own fighter from Macross Delta and is also on the back of this particular figure as well. This of course is a fantastically designed figure. Now a lot of people have wondered what exactly the high metal R stands for. Well essentially looking it up I found out that it stands for essentially using hybrid plastics along with die cast metal in the joint areas to reinforce the figure and give it some excellent posability and durability as well. Now if you look inside the joint here, which is a little bit difficult, but you can see that there are some metal pieces that are used for the joints themselves on the elbow as well. There is a metal piece that is put right into the elbow part and all the other joints are the same way. Now the feet themselves are pretty much die cast feet but you can see on the inside, on the hinges and everything, there's die cast metal mixed in with the plastic, which of course is a very heavy duty plastic from what I can feel on it versus most other plastic figures that I have gotten before in the past. But the posability, the range, and the joints are nice and stiff and firm. So when you go to pose them or move them around several times, I cannot see this figure getting loose joints anytime soon. And of course, with this kind of poseability, it just makes it so you can recreate pretty much almost any kind of pose from the original show itself. It has a great range of bend in both the legs and the arms. So you'll never go wrong with this particular figure. It's just awesome all around. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the accessories you get because it does come with quite a few because there is a bit of parts forming basically having to take certain parts off and change them out we'll start with the antenna lasers as you can see they come as the straight version for when it's transformed which we'll look at next and then of course you have the ones that are already mounted on that are have them splayed out a bit which is the standard configuration from when they're not being used you have the cockpit piece, which is molded once again in a Macer style color from Macross Delta, because the color of his cockpit window is also this same type of color. You get the missile packs, the air to air medium range missiles, which have a nice bit of detail to them, and of course also have that nice black stripe on there. Gives it a little bit of uh, extra color. And then you have two pairs of wings. Now this is an interesting thing for the high metal. They come with, dish, with, um, with the wings able to be pulled off. The wings that I currently have on the figure are what are called animation style wings. So they're shorter but still detailed and they allow for the figure to have a greater range of motion with the legs when swinging back and everything as they don't interfere with it. Now of course you can just pop them right off and replace them with the regular wings. You have two types of regular wings. You have the standard one that has no missile mounting points. And then you have the other wing that actually has the missile mounting points. So you can actually mount the missiles right onto the wing. 
And so if you want to do shoots with the fighter without the missile tabs on the wing, you have that option, which is fantastic because none of the other Valkyrie fighters out there really have this option. You just have the wings with, unfortunately, the clips on there. So you kind of just have to deal with the fact you're always going to see the clips on them versus the high metal where you can just pop them off real easy and replace them with the non-clip version. For the intakes, as you know, when the fighter transforms from its Batroid mode or Guardian mode to the fighter mode and back and forth, the intake covers in the show actually retract. Now, of course, this would be hard to gimmick on any kind of fighter, so pretty much all of the Macross Valkyries come with either already inlaid vents for the fans, and then you just pop on a cover, or in this case with a high metal, it comes with this piece right here that you pop off from the leg here to replace this vent cover style. Now for the landing gear, that's kind of also another bit of parts for me because unfortunately, due to the size of this figure and its scale, retractable landing gear just would not have been feasible nor mechanically sound. So to make it easier, they have the landing gear as a separate set and you essentially just pop off the covers on the legs where the landing gear would go and install the landing gear in there for when you have it in on a field setting as if it's in you know basically on the ground and just ready to be deployed so of course you get the front land gear and the rear landing gear naturally very well detailed the wheels unfortunately are not rubber nor are they actual wheels they're just molded all one piece so there's no rolling to them, but that's okay. You're not really going to be rolling this thing now, are you? Now, the other part that we're going to talk about is the hands real quick. So we have two types of hands. We have what are called anime style hands. These are the ones where the hands are more rounded and have the kind of chubby fingers. And then you have what I like to call at least the do you remember love style hands which are the more mechanical and more detailed hands and i honestly in my own opinion prefer the do you remember love style hands versus the anime style hands but that's just me i just like the extra mechanical detail on them all right so one more hand type that we also have is what is called the gun grip hand because once again a little bit of parts forming for the gun itself you basically replace the original trigger part on the gun with this gun grip hand and then just attach the gun on. It's a nice change. I like it because it makes the gun easier to sit in fighter mode by having this change. Now, as I said, this fighter is extremely detailed, this Valkyrie fire figure, and I really love that about it. And just all the joints and everything and the posability is just amazing. You can get so much posability out of it versus some of the earlier releases. If you want to have him taking a knee. It's pretty simple to do. And with the posability of the ankles and everything, he can pretty much do it. It takes a little finagling, but not many figures for Macross Valkyries can actually pull this off from the older line series. And that's one of the things I love about the high metal. Now, the other thing is the price point. The price isn't too bad. I got this guy for about... 80 some odd dollars before or actually after shipping and everything it was about 90 dollars for it i apologize for that so that's not too bad considering i got you know five day shipping from japan and once again i ordered this guy on hobby link japan not sure if they actually have any left there were a few that were restocked last week but i think those might be gone as well because this guy has been out for a while but anyway, let us go on. Now, there are one more set of hands that I did not go over currently. 
And the reason for that is because they are the perfect transformation hands. They are basically super small and do not look very good. And they're meant to just be there for the transformation. So I don't even bother with them anymore. But um, let's go ahead and get this guy transformed here. Now, some of the transformation is a little tricky because some of the parts are a little bit tight. But that's a good thing because of the fact that you don't want a figure that's going to get all floppy and loose over the years of use. And then, like I said, for the antennas, we take these current ones off and replace them with the straight antennas. There we go. And then once again, just for the sake of transformation, we're going to go ahead and remove the perfect animation wings now I am being very careful they actually pop off pretty easily but I still am very careful because the last thing I do want is for these tabs on the wings to get worn out and not hold in like they should so you should be very gentle whenever you're doing the transformation and we're just gonna go ahead and take this guy into guardian mode so we're going to untab this part. You can see these little holes right here, which are normally painted in on other Valkyries, are actually where these nubs right here for the legs grip in. So I was tempted to paint those, but I was like, no, because there's going to be a lot of tabbing in and tabbing out of there. Now, you see this right here? This is a really cool thing that they did for this Valkyrie and what they've done in the most recent Arcadia ones. It is basically a filler piece. It fills in the normal open gap that would be left from the transformation and I really love that because it really makes the figure look a lot more solid and anime accurate with that filler piece in but now that we have that out of the way we're gonna lift this up and go ahead and push that head down that way and then we're gonna untab the cockpit and the upper body part we're gonna go ahead and pull off the heat shield cover once again a pretty tight fit and you can see in there there's a little macer pilot he's not exactly great painted but he's so small and with the colored cockpit you're really not going to notice so we're going to snap that colored cockpit in where it should be and then we're going to go ahead and move on with the rest of the transformation we're going to rotate the head after we get the guns clear for the head lasers rotate that around Whoop. and yeah just be aware that the head laser parts will sometimes pop off during the transformation but that's a good thing because I'd rather them pop off than the actual antennas themselves break so we'll just pop that right back on move that head into position there all right and now we're gonna go ahead and scooch the cockpit forward so that it connects into there making sure everything is looking good. And then rotate that down. Now it's a pretty tight fit, but that's all right. You don't want to force it. Just take it one step at a time. Make sure everything is cleared and in place. And it will snap into place nice and tight. And there we go and then push the head down just a little bit get this piece right in there and that will lock everything into place and then that sit snug you can see the heads nice and resting right in there now here's one of the interesting design aspects that they came up with and that's these sliding bars now they are a little bit tricky because Sometimes they want to work with you and then sometimes they don't and they want to pop off But you can easily pop the arms right back on there without too much trouble And now we're gonna bring this part forward With the legs, it's got a little bar, you know lift the bar up with the legs 
and rotate that that way so that way you can see that bar in an upper position like that then you're going to slide it forward the legs have these little tabs right here that go into these holes here so once you've got it into position you're going to break that down and it's going to tab right into there and do the same thing for the other leg it's going to tab right into there as well just make sure it's all lined up nice and neat there we go nice neat tab all right and now we're getting on to guardian mode or jerwalk whichever one you prefer I prefer guardian myself but that's just me and the feet of course are nice and poseable they pull down and extend out and the front part of the foot is on a bit of a swivel hinge so that way you can get some posability and splay out the legs just like in the show and then you're gonna bring the arms back forward a bit Oop, and see that's what I was talking about right there <laughs> that little sliding bar is great but at the same time can be a little difficult to deal with when you're moving the arms into different positions but not too bad so once you get it into position it locks and it stays there pretty nicely all right so let's go ahead and fold the backpack into position now a nice thing that I like about these high metal R's too is some of the other older Valkyries had a little tab that you had to tab the backpack in but they redesigned it so that the backpacks own attachment bar here holds it nice and neat into place without it flopping around everywhere and now that we've got it transformed we're gonna go ahead I put these in here just to make sure they're not in the way because I don't like the idea of bumping into the pegs while I'm transforming or dealing with hands and stuff while I'm transforming so that's just me you don't necessarily have to do this but I just feel it's safer that way because there's less chance of the hand getting or the tab for the hand getting messed up because it is just a plastic tab on part and I prefer that not to get damaged over time so we're gonna put that back on for right now we're gonna go with the wings with the missile punks because we're gonna be showing this fighter this figure in the fighter mode next and I want to put the missile packs on there because I always like to have missiles that's like when I'm playing Macross 30 on my PlayStation 3. I like to always make sure I've got some missiles in stock because, boy, some of the bad guys in that game do not take well to anything except for missile fire. And there we go. And now we are in Guardian mode or Jerwalk, whichever one you prefer. and it stands excellently well well as long as I position the feet correctly <laughs> there we go and of course a little bit upwards just tab this back one more there we go And as you can see, like I said, that arm groove right there can be a little bit tricky to deal with. But it's still a very good design choice. And there we are. Just got to make sure to lower the arms a bit.
All right, and here we are. And then, like I said, just going to tilt back the other leg so that matches for a better range of motion for the legs themselves. And lowers, lifts up the body a bit. But like I said, the posability on this is just fantastic. You can pretty much get any classic pose from the show out of this figure. For the price, it's just great to figure to have. The detailing looks great. There's very little kibble, if at all, on the figure itself that you can see visibly. And another thing that I love about this too, and that's why I can't wait to get my VF1A with the super packs, is that it does have the attachment points for super packs. So hopefully they will release one that'll have just the super packs by itself. But uh, let's go ahead and change out these covers on the intake. So we're going to go ahead, pull these off. They come off pretty easy. Just have to loosen it a little bit and then it just slides right off and then we're going to go ahead and replace it with the traditional intakes which slide right onto place just got to make sure you remember which side oh yep always remember the longer side is on the inner part and then the shorter side is for the outer side. So that way you'll help remember which side is which. <laughs> Sometimes I still tend to forget. But, and again, I've only had this fighter for a short time, only about a month or so. There we go. So now he's got the open intake covers. And once again, fantastic looking fighter. I just absolutely love it. And now, let's go ahead and change over to fighter mode for the final part. Once again, take the hands off. And before we proceed, let's go ahead and do the gun gimmick. So, as you can see, the gun's extended out. It's got the nice hand gripping on the trigger and everything. Well, we're going to go ahead and pull off that trigger part with the hand. And then we're going to go ahead and replace it with this piece right here. Which is the one that you can use for when the fighter is actually, you know, holding with the perfect transformation hands. But nobody really wants to use those. So we're going to go ahead and make sure everything is all set. Put this in. And that's pretty much it. The gun pod just retracts it and then this tab becomes a nice flush tab for the gun pod to be held while it's in fighter mode. And let's go ahead and get it in fighter mode. Pretty simple last part of the transformation. The only tricky part are the arms themselves. So for this part, just to make it easier, and less cumbersome. I'm just going to take the wings off temporarily. You can transform it without it, but like I said, it tends to make it a little bit easier when you don't have the wings on. I'm going to go ahead and close up the feet because they no longer need to be out. Close that up, push that right in. Let it go right in there nice and neat line that up all right and let's go ahead and get the arms into position go ahead and open this back up again and pop put that right back where it was nice clean cover do the same with this guy nice clean cover as well close that up Rotate these around. And now we're going to move the legs up to their maximum position. We're going to go ahead and swing the arms in. 
and then around into their resting position for the transformation. Oh, and there's that arm. This one seems to be more finicky than the other arm. He is just a troublemaker. But you'll see they have a nice swing bar. Rotate it around. Like I said, everything is pretty stiff and strong. So you do want to be careful not to put too much pressure. And now that we got the arms in pretty much the position we want, we're going to put the gun pod in between them. Lock the gun pod in between the two arms. And then they're going to slide forward slightly on their rails to get into a nice, neat, flush position. And now for the last part, the easier part, we're going to get the legs ready to go. We're going to flip down the backpack part with the nice folded wings. And we're going to go ahead and put the legs into position. As you can see, there's a little tab there. It's going to tab right in. And then the other leg is going to do the same. It has its own little tab. And it's going to tab right in. And then for the arms, they have tabs on their sides. They're going to go into the legs. Let's make sure that you keep it in the right position. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So you want to make sure both arms are lined up correctly. There we go. Tabbed in. And the last part is just to make sure the backpack is tabbed in with the legs as well. And once everything is tabbed in and all set, it's all nice and flush against the body. And it holds together nice and tight. That's something that I love about this fighter too. And this particular figure line with the high metal R is that everything, once you snap it into place, is nice and tight the joints are nice and firm because of the combination of the die cast and the composite plastics used so they grip against each other nicely and boom we now have a fighter mode pretty awesome fighter mode i must say i like to have the lasers down a little bit less chance of shooting towards the cockpit but this is just an excellent fighter. Not huge or anything, but perfect for somebody who wants to collect Valkyries, doesn't want to spend $200 on them, but still wants something of a decent size with a lot of great detail into it. And let me tell you, these high metal R's deliver on the detail and the feel and the replication of the transformation. It's nice, clean, crisp, and like I said, just a beautiful fighter. So let's go ahead and put some missile pods on here because, you know, we might encounter some Zentradi enemies out there. So let's go ahead and arm up with some missiles. Once again, I was kind of sad to see that it didn't come with the box style missiles from Macross Do You Remember Love and from the end of the original Macross series and the strike valkyrie but once again i got that vf1a that does come with them on pre on pre-order from hobby link japan so i'll be getting some soon enough but there we go there's the fighter mode with the missiles attached and now for the last part let's go ahead and talk about that landing gear so on the front here you can see there's this little tab that you can easily get your finger into for the front landing gear yeah, pull that off grab the front landing gear piece you see it's got these tabs on there that tab right in 
So you're going to tuck that right in there. It's not a tight fit, but it does stay in there nice and sturdy, so you don't have to worry about it falling off. And then the back ones, they are a little bit more tricky because you have to be a little bit more careful because that whole front piece comes off. And that could be a downside in the future. That's why I'm being very careful with them because this is literally the front part of the Valkyrie's leg. So if these pieces get worn down over time, you could be looking at having it fall off while you're in Batroid mode or in, of course, Guardian mode. So you do want to be careful while you are handling those particular pieces and pulling them off to replace them with the landing gear. But let's go ahead and get the landing gear on. There's that. And there's that one as well. So now we have our landing gear and it just looks amazing. It looks like they're not even actual pieces that you had to attach. It looked like they just go right with the figure like you just deployed them out. And of course it sits nice and neat right there on the table. Now it does come with these adapters that go for the different modes. There is one of course also for the mode when it's in fighter mode. The only problem I have with that particular adapter is the fact that that particular adapter has some issues with actually fitting around the gun pod. It's really, I had to finagle it quite a few times. I literally had to take the gun pod off, put the adapter around it, and then snap it back into place. And it was kind of a pain to deal with. That's probably the only problem that I've had with this fighter so far. Otherwise, it's just a fantastic figure. If you can get your hands on one of these or any of the other high metal R, and I do stress high metal R, there were original high metals that aren't the R series, which is the revised series, that are not quite as good. Uh, the die cast and the joints used for those ones are not as effective as the ones on the current high metal R's. So if you can find the high metal R's, definitely get one. Like I said, I pre-ordered my high metal our VF1A, do you remember love Hikaru version on Hobby Link Japan? They may still have some pre-orders available. I can't say for certain. Last time I looked, the pre-orders were sold out, and it is coming out later this particular month. So, or sorry, not this month, but next month. So definitely you want to take a look into that and see. But if you can get your hands on one, either through eBay or somewhere else for a decent price. It's definitely worth it if you're a Macross fan and are just looking for a fighter to pick up. That's not going to cost you $200 or more. So once again, it's been great showing off this fighter to you guys here at the Lucian G. Kaiser Age. Once again, I'm Lucian G. Kaiser. I look forward to doing some more Macross reviews and some other anime figure reviews. Because as you can see, I've got a pretty large collection. Not to mention the fact that my Gundam backlog of Gundam model kits to build is getting a little bit of a pile. So I've got to start working on those while I'm also working on my Macross Lore videos and my other anime related videos as well. So definitely check out my channel some more. If you love anime, you love manga, you love gaming, and you love Macross, I'm going to be talking about all that in more the next couple of months. But again, my name is Lucian G. Kaiser, signing out.